coming up on today's episode of the AMA Drone Report. The FAA eases restrictions on drone operations over some federal facilities. Australian officials investigate an unusual internet video. And Unique introduces a Mantis G drone. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world. In partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 200,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. I'm Sophie Herlock. The FAA is working with the DOD to establish intermittent restrictions on drone flights within the lateral boundaries of select federal facilities during specified times. Currently, drone operators are prohibited from flying at these locations at all time. The FAA is working to ensure that these restrictions are narrowly tailored and remain in effect only when necessary. No TAMs will be issued in advance, indicating the sites where these intermittent restrictions reply. Drone operators will still be able to easily identify the status of the airspace at these locations using the FAA's Unmanned Aircraft System UAS Data Display Systems Interactive Map, which will show the following. The airspace shapes will appear gray when the Section 99.7 Special Security Instructions airspace is inactive and no restrictions are placed on the drone operators. Approximately 24 hours before restrictions are activated, the designated airspace will change to yellow as a warning that restrictions will soon become active. At the end of the 24-hour warning window, the designated airspace will change to red while the drone restrictions are in effect. Specific activation times can also be viewed by clicking on the individual airspace shapes in UDDS. In the next drone minute, let's take a quick look at a few stories making rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. As Hurricane Dorian crawled its way up to the U.S., the FAA warned drone pilots not to interfere with rescue aircraft. Drone users should check NOTAMs and TFRs and avoid flying in areas where drones are prohibited. Drone pilots must comply with FAA rules and should avoid flying in the area unless conducting an active disaster response or recovery mission. Be aware that the FAA might issue a TFR in the affected area. Be sure to check for active TFRs if you plan to fly. Remember that you cannot fly inside a TFR without FAA approval. During a natural disaster, do not fly your drone in or around emergency response efforts unless you have special authorization to do so. There are low-flying aircraft as part of the storm response, mostly in low-visibility areas. If you are flying, emergency response operations cannot. Skydio's next generation selfie drone is getting close to market and the company has published videos from the new drone to show people what they can look forward to. Skydio states they're raising the bar again on what a self-flying drone can do and how incredibly cinematic its video can be. The Skydio 2 is expected to be available later this year and the company promises you'll be pleasantly surprised with the price. A video captured by a drone flying near Norwich Castle in the UK brought a rebuke to the pilot from the local authorities. The video posted recently to Facebook by an unnamed user carried the caption, maybe how a bird looks at this. But the flight was made in violation of several CAA rules regulating the operations of drones in the UK, including the flight of drones within 150 feet of people and 500 feet of built-up areas. The person who posted the video was given words of advice from local authorities, and the video has been deleted. The FAA has published guidance for drone pilots seeking to help in times of trouble. First responders and other organizations responding to natural disasters or other emergency situations may be eligible for expedited approval through our special governmental interest process. To apply for a waiver through the SGI process, you must be an existing Part 107 remote pilot with a current certificate or you must have an existing certificate of waiver or authorization. To submit a waiver through this process, you must fill out the Emergency Operation Request form and send to the FAA System Operations Support Center at 9-ATOR-HQ-SOSC at FAA.gov. Now back to the rest of the news. 
A video has surfaced in Australia of a man who appears to be being carried under a large homemade drone over Upper Coliban Reservoir in central Victoria with a fishing pole in hand. He drops the bait in the water, catches a fish, and flies back to shore. The Australian Civil Aviation Safety Authority is investigating the video to see if any of the country's rules were violated by the flight. CASA spokesman Peter Gibson said regardless, the flight was genuinely unsafe. This is a first for Australia to have a large homemade drone being used to lift someone off the ground, he said. It's not really a sensible thing to do in any way, shape, or form. There's lots of things that could have gone wrong. Someone could have been seriously injured. While some believe that Australia's drone certification laws are lax, Gibson says that safety regulations are comprehensive. Of course, a lot could have gone wrong with the flight. In best case scenario, the flight would have drained the batteries and dropped the angler into the water. Tim French, an electrician who helped design and build the drone, has declined public comment. Unique introduced the new Mantis G drone, designed to make it easier to create photos and videos from a whole new perspective. The new integrated gimbal produces video in full HD and 4K resolutions, as well as high-res still photos. Over 30 minutes of flying time are coupled with the Mantis G's PX4 flight controllers to offer enhanced stability. A new waypoint feature tells the Mantis G where to go, allowing you to plan flight routes in advance. The drone is equipped with security features such as a redundant control signal or an adjustable virtual fence, which ensures that the Mantis does not exceed a specified radius. With the included controller and the improved indoor positioning system, the drone can be flown indoors as well as outdoors in a stable, precisely controlled manner. The Mantis G has a top speed of about 45 miles per hour in sport mode and is not only quiet but also very energy efficient. Unique has a set retail price for the Mantis G at $699. And that wraps up this week's Drone Report. Don't forget to subscribe and to check us out on Twitter and on Facebook. For more information on the exciting hobby drone world, head over to modelaircraft.org. Thank you so much for watching and come back tomorrow to wrap up the week with an episode of Airborne Unlimited.